In this section, we're going to talk about delirium, otherwise known as an acute confusional state. Now, I think acute confusional state really defines it much better than del the term delirium because we have the term acute, meaning that it happens quickly. And obviously, con it's sort of defined by confusion. And other defining characteristics are it tends to be transient, so it lasts for hours or days. So this is not a chronic condition. This is an acute condition that is hours to days. Now, so what is the pathophysiology of delirium? Well, the pathophysiology of delirium uh, um, occurs in what is called the reticular, reticular activation system, or sometimes called um, the RAS. So the reticular activation system is actually a collection of neuronal centers, or neuronal clusters, in the thalamus, the pons, and the medulla, and a few other places. There's some in the brainstem as well. Um, now, these areas, uh, the reticular activation system is actually um, involved in several different pathologies, including ADHD, and it can be involved in chronic dementias as well. But um, in this particular case, we're going to be talking about just how it is involved in the acute confusional state. So the acute confusional state is defined by um, a disruption of consciousness. So an altered state of consciousness. Um, a um, loss of cognition or decreased cognition um, and this is because of a degree decreased ability to focus and it can be defined by underactivity or overactivity so the person may be lethargic or agitated And also, also on, in some occasions, it can be associated with hallucinations or um, intrusive thoughts. Now, so what is causing this? Well, the reticular activating system is responsible for helping us um, change states of consciousness. So the reticular activating system is the um, system that helps us wake up in the morning and stay awake and alert all day and fall asleep at night. It is changes to this reticular activating system that helps us change our level of consciousness or the sleep-wake cycle. And it is also the uh, reticular activating system that um, allows us to direct our attention. Okay, so if you have changes in, in the um, reticular activating system, you're going to directly impact this um, consciousness and directly impact our ability to focus and, um, and problem solve. Okay, so interestingly enough, you know, the elderly people um, actually have some atrophy and decreased activity in the reticular activating system so it decreases with age. So this makes elderly people more prone to um, developing delirium. Now, however, again, this is an acute condition, so elderly people may be prone to it, but they need another precipitating event. So what happens? Well, the reticular activating system um, is dependent on um, acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is one of the most, actually there's two, two sets of uh, neurotransmitters that are very active in the reticular activating system. One is acetylcholine and the other is norepinephrine. So if we have things that change the level of acetylcholine, that decrease the level or um, interfere with acetyl acetylcholine receptors, um, then we can cause delirium and things that change the levels of norepinephrine in this area of the brain can also affect it. So what kinds of things can cause delirium? 
Um, anything that is uh, causes increased anticholinergic activity. anticholinergics or increase norepinephrine levels. Now there are a whole host of things that can do that. Primary is what one is um, medications. Bladder infections because irritation of the bladder um, actually stimulates the vagus nerve. The bladder is innervated with the vagus nerve and that kind of causes a vagal re reflex response that has um, causes anticholinergic activity. So elderly people with UTIs and irritation to the bladder can, um, can develop delirium. Um, other types of infection or inflammation or stress response. Disruption of the sleep-wake sleep cycle. So sleep apnea. Um, hospitalization because we tend to wake patients up you know every couple of hours and the list goes on you know working up a patient with acute delirium um, actually vitamin deficiencies um, and I'm not sure of the exact mechanism of this but it probably has some effect on the acetylcholine or the acetylcholine receptors um, so B6 and B12 um, and the list goes on. If you look at the um, if you look at the table in the reading that I assigned on delirium, it will give you a very uh, lengthy list of different underlying uh, different things that can cause delirium. So the workup can be sometimes very tricky. The way that I work up delirium is I try to I begin with the history of the patient and I talk to the patient and the family and try to figure out. Okay, so when did the delirium start? Okay, it started 24 hours ago. What changed in the last few days? Did the patient stop or start um, start medications? Um, are they using any drugs of abuse? Narcotics, cocaine, anything like that can have direct impacts on the reticular activating system. Um, how has their nutrition been? Is there any possibility that they have vitamin deficiencies? Um, are there recent changes in health status? Could they have an infection? Have they com been complaining of signs or symptoms of a UTI? Um, have they been having difficulty sleeping? Or do they snore very loudly? Um, and then the other possibility can be um, electrolyte disturbances because as you as we talked about when we talked about action potentials and the importance of the sodium potassium pump anything that changes the um, concentration levels of sodium potassium um, calcium magnesium inside or outside of the cell can um, can interfere with the action of of neurons so um, electrolyte disturbances are can also be a culprit um, okay, so I hope that helps you to understand sort of the basis of or the theory behind what may be the cause of delirium um, in most patients.